Guten Tag, punks. Uh, this is Janine, and we are bringing you a special edition of the Digest today. Uh, the reason I am doing the intro is because the monkey is missing in action at the moment, uh, so I will be leading things. Uh, Chris is also here as a co-host, and we have two guests, uh, Giacomo and Alicos, about RGB and just second layer off-chain protocols for Bitcoin in general. So say hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hey. Hi guys. Oh, we will also talk about uh, magical Bitcoin libraries, of course. Yes, of course. Rainbows and lightning and ponies. Um, as a start, um, so I've been hearing bits and pieces about RGB in particular since 2018 or so, but um, I think things are still very much on the download at this point um, because you're still in development. So could one of you just kind of explain what your project is about and what inspired you all to get involved and what the current state of it is. I think we'll take this one, Alecos, if you don't mind. Sure, no, so basically, right. yeah, so basically back in 2018, uh, there was a, we were a research center and a consulting company and we were working together. Alecos was working for me and uh, we had uh, a few clients asking about tokens. And so the first approach was to tell them that tokens, tokens didn't make any sense from an economical point of view and from a, a social dynamic point of view at all. But uh, except for that, we were also suggesting our clients that the typical token platforms like uh, Ethereum, ERC20 and other shitcoins, they were not technologically sound uh, other than the, the fundamental um, uh, meaningless uh, uh, token scheme. And so uh, one of these clients asked us, OK, uh, let's assume that we have some reason to agree to disagree about the reason to make the token. What kind of technological platform do you suggest in order to make one? Because we are seeing that uh, you are you are bashing shit coins, but actually on Bitcoin there are there have been a few experiments like Colored Coin, and they were all abandoned, like uh, Colu, uh, CoinSpark, uh, CoinPrism. They were all abandoned, and then we, you have Omni, but it's not really developed anymore. It seems, and then you have. Uh, a counterparty but it's kind of the same so what do you suggest so in order to answer to this request as a like a, it was like a, a client commission and we hired peter todd to in order to to answer to the question if we really have to do any kind of token in a bitcoin related way anyhow uh what do we do uh does color coin make any sense does uh, counterparty make any sense what is the right answer so it was initially just a research project nothing different from that and uh, peter todd came out with uh, uh, his uh, um, very well known at this point uh, idea of uh, client side validation and single use seals so the concept there peter proposed this concept already for Bitcoin in a way in the scaling Bitcoin Milan conference and the idea is that uh, the the time the Bitcoin time chain shouldn't be uh, Peter would call it blockchain because he doesn't agree that time chain is a good name but I, I like time chain more uh, it's not a, a good way to uh, transfer to uh, to publish all the detailed information for a property transfer so it's not very good that we use the entire blockchain in order to post out there forever all the details about the uh, chain of property transfers up to this point uh, so signatures and scripts and everything uh, the, the idea of peter is we could just pass all this information about the the property transfer off chain and, uh, and then we could just use the blockchain as a proof of publication for untedable spending purposes. So we just create this uh, list of commitments and the miners can include uh, these commitments without any special meaning. And then when we, when we give, uh, if I have to give some kind of uh, a token or a Bitcoin to Alecos, I will send to Alecos privately the, the transaction with the signature uh, the, the, over the, 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 all the previous uh, chain of, uh, of transfer passages. And then I will include a commit to this transaction inside uh, a publication that miners will publicly include. And in this way, you, you get a slightly better scalability, not like a, not a light and lever scalability, but because you still have to do one on-chain transaction for every uh, transfer, basically. But you can aggregate transfer in some way. You can play around with scalability a little bit. And also, especially, you can 
uh, get a way better privacy because basically nobody can see what you are doing when you look at the, the, the time chain. They just see these random commitments and inside the commitments there are, uh, there are I mean, the commitment refers to uh, some transaction that is happening off band. So I will pass some proof to Alecos and Alecos will, press, will pass some proof to Janine and, and so on. So this idea was proposed as an alternative design to Bitcoin, but as we well know, uh, implementing alternative design to Bitcoin in such a uh, deep ways uh, is probably, uh, I mean, it, it's it's uh, unfeasible for the foreseeable future. So Peter said, let's do that with uh, with the tokens. If you really want to issue a, a, an issue token, you will anyway have some level of centralization because you will have an issuer. So some level of centralization will be there anyway. So let's use this kind of alternative design, which is client side validated. You only use the blockchain as an anti-double spending tool and you do everything else off band, off chain, passing proofs directly. So the, the main, the reason that the, the, his proposal was very interesting is that the main fallback for this strategy, is you have two kinds of fallback. The first one is that if Alecos wants to receive something from me, he has to be reachable directly in a synchronous way or not synchronous maybe, but he has to be reachable independently because I have to send him directly in a secure channel uh, the, the the chain of proof signed by me transferring the, the, the title to him. So uh, he has to be online to receive basically. And the second problem is, uh, so we have to establish the direct connection. That's not the case with uh, normal uh, layer one Bitcoin because everybody can just push a, a transaction there when it's included in a block. Everybody else can download it forever and without any kind of direct, co I, I don't have to be connected with you to send you a Bitcoin transaction on the layer one. I can just send it broadcast it and you will just download it from the time chain. Uh, in this case, you have to be online to be reachable by me in order to send you something off band. And the second problem is that if you if you just uh, have your uh, seed connecting you to some uh, Bitcoin UTXOs, uh, giving you authority over some Bitcoin UTXOs, that's not enough to spend your uh, tokens or your uh, your coins, assets or whatever. You also have to to keep stored, to, to back up and store forever all the uh, transaction graph uh, up to that point. So it is not enough to save your, your seed. In order to have the, to, to save tokens for in this scheme, you also have to save all the previous uh, states uh, forever. Otherwise, you burn the tokens, basically. You, 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 lo you lose any access. So the interesting point is that these two, uh, these two problems, these two challenges are pretty huge, but they are exactly the same kind of uh, problem that uh, we are not exactly, but they are very close to the to the problems, to the challenges that we face with Lightning Network. When you receive some Lightning Network transaction, you have to be reachable by me. It's not that you, I can just broadcast it on the blockchain and, and you will uh, come up uh, two years later and just uh, take it down. You have to be reachable because you have to receive my update of the channel, uh, the channel state. And also you have to keep, you have to store all the channels update in order to be secure because uh, you have to broadcast the punishment trans tran transaction if I try to, uh, to, to, to the fraud you and to, to breach the contract so you have to start to store everything basically until you close the channel so the idea was let's do something which is based on the same uh, architecture proposed by peter but we do that in a way which is uh, the, the closer possible to Lightning Network implementation so we try to reuse uh, if not the, the actual tools at least the logic of, uh, of, of Lightning Network in order to uh, mitigate these two UX challenges of the client side valid validation model. And uh, since we are already there, we also evolved this protocol in order to make uh, tokens uh, transferable uh, directly on channels so that instead of uh, doing uh, one, one, one layer one Bitcoin transaction for each RGB transaction, we do one layer two Bitcoin transaction for each uh, RGB Bitcoin trans uh, asset transaction. So we can move around assets uh, on the Lightning Network. This idea was pretty much uh, uh, was interesting, but it was not an implementation. Then I presented it in Lisbon uh, building on Bitcoin conference. The, my presentation was mostly a half a, jo a half joke because uh, the point was trying to convince Bitcoin maximalists that tokens may make some sense in some circumstances. I'm, I'm not really convinced myself uh, about that, but I tried to to play the devil's advocate about that. Uh, after it, the, the project went uh, the dormant for a while, and after a while, 
Alekos, that was the main developer of the first prototype, he moved to, to Blockstream to work on, uh, on green wallet, basically. And then um, uh, some companies like uh, basically Bitfinex for Tether uh, in order to uh, try to use this, uh, this, uh, this uh, architecture to move around Tether dollars and uh, Fulgur Ventures and Bitrefill and s some companies approached me uh, one year ago exactly and they proposed me to give some fun actual funding to try to move this idea and this uh, very theoretical prototype into a working system. So one year ago the project uh, started again in a more uh, concrete way and uh, a few months ago Alecos uh, uh, quit uh, uh, Blockstream to work on a magical Bitcoin library which is what, which is, uh, what he will be talking about today with you mostly uh, because that's the, 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 the main focus of, the, of uh, his activity right now but since he was available again I also hired him back part-time to finish up uh, the RGB stuff. So RGB is still, uh, it's a nice theoretical idea, but it's still not uh, uh, production ready because it needs a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, there is a lot of interplay with your, if you have to do what I described, uh, you need to prepare a tra Bitcoin transaction uh, inside uh, a Bitcoin wallet, let's say Bitcoin Core, then you have to move this transaction in a, a P, a, a P, uh, PBST, uh, sorry, PSBT uh, way to the RGB uh, software. Then the RGB software has to create the off band token transfer, and then you have to take this token transfer and include it in the Bitcoin transaction and give the Bitcoin transaction back to something like Core or another wallet or Magical or whatever in order to sign it and broadcast it. So it's pretty complex and uh, and while the RGB logic itself is pretty much defined at this point, the challenge to include in an actual working wallet it's, it's still it's still kind of uh, it's still kind of uh, advanced. So uh, the the other part of the work of Alicus is is that is Magical. Bitcoin that I leave to him to describe because he's more uh, more uh, proficient than me in uh, describing magical uh, what it is. Yeah, definitely. Um, if Chris, if you don't have any questions, we can go into magical Bitcoin. Let's do it. All right, let's go. Uh, yeah. So, well, I mean, the the goal of magical Bitcoin is actually uh, fairly simple. So basically, it's this project I'm working on um, with the goal of uh, building a set of tools, libraries, uh, that could be like a base layer for any kind of uh, on-chain wallet that you might want to build. So the idea is that uh, these libraries, they kind of hide all of the complexity of actually like implementing a wallet uh, and they try to support potentially any kind of uh, spending condition you, you might want to do. So uh, you can use like time locks, multi-sigs or even just single sigs. So the idea is that uh, if you're a developer and you want to uh, build a wallet instead of um, writing this stuff over and over again uh, by yourself, potentially in a non really peer reviewed way because you, you do it and nobody looks at your code and then somebody else do it and you keep repeating the same code. The idea is just to kind of focus the effort on that one single project so uh, we can all peer review this project very well. Uh, and then if I want to make a single SIG wallet, I can use it. But also if I want to make a multi SIG or if I want to make a more like complex spending scheme where you have time locks and then multiple people with like thresholds and everything, you can still use the same um, development layer. So it, it's, in a way, it's like a generalized uh, um, on-chain wallet library that uh, pretty much anybody can use uh, and include in, in their own projects and then use it. Yeah, if I may add uh, uh, like a biographical uh, note about this uh, as well, about me and Alecos, uh, the I think that uh, uh, there was a point in time when we were working together uh, a couple of years ago in which uh, some of our clients, they were like banks and we were basically setting up uh, multi-sig uh, uh, cold storage uh, strategies for, uh, for Swiss banks uh, holding Bitcoin. And there was a point in which uh, we, were, uh, we were basically uh, designing the, the idea we were using a very trivial Electrum, uh, Electrum multi-sig uh, uh, implementation and setup. But the idea was that it would be way cool 
since you can do that with the Bitcoin script, to do something like, for example, a decreasing level of security. So, for example, you want to start with a, a 4 of 4, which is super secure, but super scary because if you just lose one key, uh, then you are then you are screwed, you, you don't have access to your Bitcoin anymore. But then maybe after five years, yeah, your security is reduced to three or four and then two or four and then one or four. So uh, if you keep moving the funds every year you or every or every five, three years, you maintain the high level security, but the level security level security naturally decreases uh, over time. This is a neat situation, is a neat uh, trade off in theory. But back then, and the Bitcoin protocol allows you to do that in a in a pretty uh, beautiful way with uh, uh, check sequence verify uh, of code. So in theory, it's more than doable. The problem is that no wallet back then was able to support this kind of complex architecture without uh, uh, without getting you in troubles because you will have to create and broadcast. Uh, basically, you you will have to create and 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 use uh, this kind of very uh, non-standard addresses and then uh, you were using custom non-peer review tools in order to create the transaction and spend the transaction so it was scary especially for large amounts we did try to play around with some like uh, uh, custom electrum plugin but then we abandoned the idea completely because it was too too scary then what happened in the in the, in the last two years is that uh, uh, basically uh, the standard uh, mini script language came along and now you have a fairly uh, a fairly standard way to describe uh, the the complex uh, script so what uh, magical can do which is especially cool is that uh, you can actually you can try it right now as well while you listen you can go on magicalbitcoin.org and there is the playground there so you can read everything and also go to the playground and in the play playground you can try to use this uh, uh, this very uh, this very easy graphical well easy at least for, from for somebody who knows how, how a bitcoin a bitcoin script works uh, but you don't have to to write anything in script you you just move graphical things around and then it creates uh, the, the 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 mini script uh, that will create the actual descriptors that will be implemented in actual script that can eventually be used as an actual uh, address and so on so you can basically it's uh, the, the the tools to do very complex uh, uh, uh let, let's call it with a very scammy uh, buzzword but uh, uh, if you want to do complex smart contracts there were already the tools uh, on the Bitcoin script, but they were not secure and, uh, and predictable and deterministic and standard ways to use it. So one very, very cool thing about Magical is that now you can uh, reason at a very high level, you can compose your security policy at a very high level, and then you can uh, deterministically create uh, your uh, your addresses and your transaction spending, those, uh, those UTXOs. So this is basically what I, I find particularly cool. Uh, Magical is not just this. Magical can be used for absolutely, it's a toolkit for building wallets in layer one. So you can use it for doing one one but uh, and it's already interesting because it's uh, it's completely in uh, it's uh, in rust it's very it's uh, you know many wallets even very cool wallets like electrum electrum if you think about that it's it's a great wallet because it's a it's, it was a, a reliable wallet for a lot of time and the team put in everything from uh, from uh, their own version of uh, of uh, bip 39 before the standard to their own version of uh, of uh, pbst before pbst they they were like uh, they were like pioneers in many many things and now they are doing lightning network directly in electrum so it, it's a great product but it's kind of scary from the point of view of code stratification and and it's in python and so it's 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 not like something that you would use for high level security uh while these magical libraries they are all very modular in rust uh like um, minimum uh, review surface, you can review a sim single part individually and you can build them together. So the idea is that uh, if you want to bootstrap a new single, single sign, a single signature wallet, you can use Magical right now. And uh, if you want to bootstrap something more, com more, more complex, like, uh, like a, a multi-sig with decreasing, like uh, I can spend money with uh, Alecos for the next two. Uh, let's think about this. Uh, think about, for example, about uh, green, blockchain green. Blockchain green is, is great because you move to 
that can actually before the transaction is uh, is completed you have to ask the blockchain server to sign again answering to, to some kind of challenge for example a, a two a two-factor authentication so this increases the security but then you also increase the, the possibility that you will lose access to the fund so that's why uh, blockchain implemented this uh, uh, unlock time uh, pre-signed transaction that gets uh, uh, transferred to you and also actually recently they implemented also the the check uh, check sequence verify version which is similar to what we are describing uh, but w uh, if you can access to a, a very standard way to build these tools you can in theory go to a more complex scenario let's assume that i have for example a security partner which can be uh, a blockchain or a bank or whatever and what i do is Let's create a wallet that for the first two years is two of two, so that if some hackers get access to my keys, they cannot spend without some kind of, of uh, two-factor authentication. But then after uh, two years, for uh, for other five years, it's, it is just one uh, of one with my key. So only me can spend so that the counterpart cannot keep my funds hostage, they cannot freeze my funds for any reason, including legal reason or whatever. And then after other five years, it's, it becomes one of two, either mine or them. So if I lose my key, uh, I can still recover my fund asking nicely and presenting some kind of documents or whatever. So even if you, uh, so you, you can build very complex uh, time dependent situation that were already possible in theory, to build with the uh, manual uh, raw transaction uh, uh, composing. But that would, would have been crazy and unsustainable. And in this way, with Magical, you can do something like that. That sounds magical. I mean, I think that I'm, I'm kind of familiar with uh, Switzerland and, and uh, the space over there. And I know that there were some insurance companies that were looking to insure traders funds on exchanges, for example, with uh, automatic withdrawals, you know, once you'd finished trading or perhaps there was some some rule set on the exchange where they would uh, withdraw the coins off the exchange, put them into a multi-sig wallet, which you would hold with the insurance company. Um, and then this would give you some kind of assurances. They'd be able to ensure the balances on the exchange and they would have some assurances that the exchange wasn't holding more capital than it needed to, for example. And I'm really interested in some of the stuff you were just talking about with the uh, logic where if the, if the coins are stored in an address for, let's say, two years, you, you could automatically just have them sent to another address and, and that's all done on chain. Well, yes, I, I don't know how you want to enter in more details, but basically it's not really that you cannot tell the, the, the Bitcoin system to automatically do something, but you can, for example, publish a key uh, so that somebody will be able to use it to sign something and you can make so that the transaction is not possible, it's not valid until you have, for example, three years since the time. So check sequence verifies is relative. So you can have basically a transaction working only after three years from the uh, so uh, you can spend immediately with two keys but you will be able to spend after three years with just one key or something like that uh, for example you can publish one key and make a transaction that says that for three years you can only spend with key a and after three years you can spend with key b and then you just publish the key b um, I don't know. Uh, well, you, you can do a lot of stuff, basically. Uh, very, very complex architecture. I will add, uh, b before before getting uh, the, the mic back to Alecos, I will add that these kind of super complex uh, uh, contracts are not yet... Su uh, that there is still a, a trade-off in using those. The trade-off is that you, if you have to do everything on chain right now, uh, a very complex contract will be very big when you spend it and also will not be very private when you spend it because if you create a very complex policy and then you spend uh, one one problem will be that your transaction will be big so assuming that you that in five years the block space fee is very very high you will have to spend a lot in order to uh, for example a five of seven you have to write down seven public keys and and then to add five six Tools, it's pretty big, even with a with a with a with less discount, uh, and then it's not private because uh, after you spend, everybody will know your security policy, even the parts of the contract that you didn't use. But this is, I think, magical becomes especially interesting after 
hopefully uh, Taproot gets uh, gets uh, uh, integrated and after we upgrade to Taproot because in that case uh, you can actually spend very complex uh, contracts in uh, in a way that saves uh, block space and also saves uh, privacy if you don't use some specific branch. So uh, using Bitcoin Miniscript uh, um, magically is already basically Let's okay. Maybe I, I'm a little bit bullshitting here, Alex. You will, you will, you will say the realistic uh, version of this. But I would say that it, that Magical is already in a pole position, uh, in a very good position to uh, implement immediately some uh, Taproot uh, uh, best uh, best practices in order to have a very compact and private uh, uh, on-chain spending. Uh, uh, scripts, let's say. I, I don't c- correct me if I'm exaggerating or bullshitting, Alecos. Uh, no, no, that's actually true. I'm just going to go back very quickly to the uh, thing we were saying before. So, the fact that uh, with Bitcoin, you, I mean, sometimes we refer to Bitcoin scripts as like smart contracts, but uh, they're not like as, uh, I don't know, powerful. I mean, it's not, probably not the right word, but uh, they're probably not as powerful. Uh, as like smart contracts on Ethereum, where you have like a smart contract that can um, autonomously like send a transaction out. Uh, but I think with Magical, it's uh, especially powerful if you couple the ability of uh, like using and then spending from arbitrary scripts uh, with uh, pre-signed uh, like off-chain transactions. So you can kind of probably like emulate that behavior of a contract acting uh, on its own. Uh, if you, for instance, have some set of rules that uh, go into effect maybe like after a while, uh, but you pre-sign a transaction with this set of rules. So for, for a uh, window of time, you can broadcast a transaction, but then you could like write a little uh, piece of software that acts like as a monitor uh, and, and keeps this transaction uh, in memory. And after um, after you reach uh, maybe like, you know, like a specific block height, it can broadcast the transaction automatically. Uh, I think think about it in a way um, almost as if these were like watchtowers. So, for instance, the uh, Revolt uh, protocol from Kevin Locke. Uh, that, that's pretty interesting. So, I, I kind of uh, reviewed their idea, uh, and they're basically making a multi-sig vault protocol uh, where they have like a, a, a set of emergency keys, so uh, some emergency addresses, um, and basically when whenever they receive some funds in their main wallet, they immediately pre-sign a transaction that sends everything to those uh, emergency keys. Uh, and so you can have like a monitor that checks the blockchain and if it sees a weird transaction, it can immediately broadcast that pre-signed transaction. So I, I think it's pretty powerful, the, the concept of um, pre-signed transaction with some specific rules uh, plus arbitrary scripts because it really lets you uh, do a, a ton of things. Um, and then regarding Taproot, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I always try to be uh, more like conservative uh, on this kind of stuff. So Giacomo is uh, is good because he's very optimistic about uh, development and everything. And I'm a bit pessimistic, but we kind of balance each other out. Uh, but yeah, I definitely think uh, with we, we the kind of architecture that I'm, I'm using with Magical, so I, I'm trying to make it very modular for, for many reasons. So one of them is, uh, as Giacomo was saying, uh, like auditability, the fact that you can, if you only use a subset of, of the feature, you can just review these and literally like uh, exclude everything else. So you can have, you could make like a completely uh, air gapped off, off, offline wallet and you could literally remove, like don't compile the online module. So you, you are sure that that uh, like executable cannot connect to the internet. It's not like trusting that it's doing, that it's having a good behavior. You can literally remove that part of code. Uh, but also one other um, advantage of having very modular stuff is that it's uh, pretty easy usually to include new things like like, like Taproot because uh, you you are not like, you don't have like a very monolithic architecture that you have to uh, tweak every time and you can tweak one part and then break another part accidentally so every part is very isolated uh, from each other uh, and yeah hopefully uh, if if Taproot is enabled I, I would love to work on that to to give basically the same um, UX benefits of uh, um, of arbitrary scripts uh, with the privacy of Taproot and also the um, fee savings of, of Taproot. 
Yeah, one one point about because uh, you mentioned Ethereum and how maybe their smart contracts are more powerful. Um, one thing that's always I've always thought funny is like I think the conservative approach that Bitcoin takes in the long run is is probably more sustainable and it actually makes sense from you know a progression point of view because what you have with ethereum is like yes you have these very complex well sometimes complex uh smart contracts that can do a lot of things but then at the same time um ethereum has had this huge issue with not even having a functioning consumer facing uh, multi-sig wallet and I've always thought that multi-sig is kind of like the the most basic kind of smart contract um, because it's you know it's just a bit more complex than than a single sig wallet and so the fact that ethereum doesn't really have that I've always found kind of curious because it it kind of reflects their you know move fast break things where they've kind of skipped a step in the uh, in the progression um but the one, yeah, if anyone wants to keep up with Taproot stuff um, that you've been mentioning, I think Bob McElrath and Brian Bishop recently published a paper uh, related to that and BIP 118, I think. So if anyone wants to read that, I would recommend looking. Um, but then regarding uh, kind of going back to... Uh, uh, sorry, may I interrupt you just one yeah, second about ahead. this uh, smart, smart contract situation? So I think that there are at least two points. So one point is related with the fact that uh, uh, shit coins like Ethereum were basically done by by amateurs that were more interested in marketing than in technology. So uh, a lot of uh, good uh, ideas in theory, but then in practice they were uh, not up to, I mean, it was not made by serious security oriented engineers, but most by marketing guys. So uh, what you have is that you are right, you can in theory create very expressive things like uh, uh, decentralized organizations, but that in practice, not only the decentralized organization will eventually fail, just like every kind of decentralized organization experiment in uh, in Ethereum ever, but uh, spectacularly like the, the, the DAO, but also very simple stuff like basic multi-sig with parity, uh, designed by the same people that designed the high-level language of uh, of uh, 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 of Solidity, basically. So the same people that designed right. Solidity were not able to use Solidity in order to create simple multi-sig. So th there is this huge difference. So Bitcoin is less expressive but it's less expressive in order to be safe, while Ethereum is like super expressive in the same way that JavaScript is, is more expressive than than uh, the like. Uh, uh, I mean, if, if you have a, a nuclear power plant, you don't want or or a, let's say an avionic uh, console in the in the uh, in the cockpit of a, of an airplane. You don't want the the board computer to uh, to let you. Uh, program stuff in JavaScript. It's true that JavaScript is more expressive, but it's also true that probably you just want to move the flaps of the plane and 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 take um, or you want to move move the uranium bars up and down in, in the nuclear power plant. You don't want that kind of flexibility because the use case is security. It's mission critical. It's safety critical. So you don't want expressivity. You want safety. But it's also true that there is another. So for example, some people think that this this is uh, contingent and and this is like. Uh, true now because uh, Ethereum was rushed out as a as a money grab, but in theory you could create something like blockstream simplicity that is actually uh, cost and time deterministic, uh, uh, externally auditable, uh, formally provable, and stuff like that. But there is also a more fundamental uh, trade-off, basically, which is the fact that mm, anyway. Uh, if, if you want the state, so uh, actually this is this is coming from uh, uh, from trolling around on Twitter with uh, Vitalik Buterin himself. Some people were saying that actually all the Turing completeness uh, uh, thing was uh, was uh, was uh, was, a, was a stupid meme. And eventually, after using a lot uh, of this meme, uh, Vitalik agreed and he said, "Okay, uh, tr uh, Turing completeness is is stupid. But what you really want is a, a rich statefulness. You want the state of your." Uh, of your um, uh, global consensus to be rich 
So you do, you can do stuff like, for example, uh, paying out automatically. So trigger a payment automatically. And the, the reason that even if you have a very solid language, like for example, simplicity or something like that, you don't want uh, that kind of restatefulness is that it makes validation intrinsically uh, more expensive. So when you have the UTXO model, uh, your validation is, uh, uh, let, let's say, linear. So something that was good at a certain block height cannot become bad after. So you can, uh, something that is invalid is invalid and something uh, or, or not yet valid because of L of down, but something that is valid is valid forever. So you can actually create something that is very easy to parallelize. Uh, from a technical point of view, you can create a not validation process that can split and parallelize the validation because the UTX model is purely uh, I'm using very improper technical terms, but it is purely monotonic. While everything that is complex enough to have uh, like uh, 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 triggering of payments uh, at a certain time is not only possibly unsafe because it's more complex, so it's more it's less reviewable, less less controllable, so it, it can it can screw up. But it's also harder on validation which is something that we don't want in Bitcoin layer one. So the, the point is that you can still replicate the, the powerful expressivity of, uh, of this stuff, but you just don't want to put that on the uh, global consensus. So the, the global consensus script should be not only secure and auditable and provable and cost on time, but it should also be uh, uh, I don't know if the term I used is right, but I would say mathematically, I would say monotonic. So I don't want uh, anything which is valid now to become invalid later when the state of the system changes. So my validation in my node can become more efficient, which is a very important point. And, and this is the point that was not appreciated by Ethereum fanboys at the beginning because they were completely ignoring any kind of validation cost. Uh, th that's the reason why you cannot basically run a, a, an Ethereum full node in production right now if you are, if you are uh, a, a below uh, perfect ideal conditions. Yeah, I mean, uh, as uh, as I think it was very recently, um, there's still a lot of Ethereum projects that they run businesses and they're having trouble doing full nodes. Yeah, I guess I should clarify before somebody tries to quote me and say that like a Bitcoin maximalist says that Ethereum is more powerful. I, I guess I should clarify that. Yeah, I mean, I think you the, shit corner. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, I'm going to the turning to the dark side. No, I, I, actually, I think. I think our listeners would would know what you meant. Uh, yeah, so uh, I actually think the the like scripting uh, engine or whatever of it is actually more powerful, but that's not a good thing. So as Jacob was saying, you you really want the um, easiest, simplest, constant time uh, scripting engine in the blockchain itself, and with the kind of scheme we were describing before of uh, using arbitrary Bitcoin scripts plus off chain transaction. Uh, it's really good because you move the logic out of the blockchain. So uh, it's, I mean, it's more private probably because you you expose the script, but the logic that uh, that makes sense of it is outside uh, of the blockchain. Uh, it's probably more uh, like safer because you can use a safer language. You can use like a Rust or all these kind of languages to implement the logic. Probably easier to upgrade if you want to because it just like restart uh, uh, like a, a process on your server. So uh, by more powerful, I, I don't mean that it's better, uh, but I think it's uh, nice to be able to uh, do like similar things on Bitcoin with this kind of scheme while maintaining the, the same, the, the usual security level of, of Bitcoin. Yeah, I, I think it's a similar problem to even the term Turing complete. When people hear that, they think, oh, Turing complete. Well, that's good. And anything else that doesn't have that is incomplete, which means it's deficient. But obviously, that's that's not how it should be interpreted. Yeah. Uh, so the only other uh, qu major question that I had besides um, we could get into like what kinds of services or products you think are going to use this um when it's ready but um I, especially in the last couple of days uh regarding multi-sig um there and in the last couple of months i've seen projects that uh, for example zk channels um was proposed in april and they 
uh, say that they're going to combine um, ZK Snarks or, well, not ZK Snarks specifically, I don't know, but uh, zero knowledge proofs and also multi multi party uh, computation. And uh, just the other day, someone was telling me um, that multi party computation is better than multi sig because multi sig is, is too expensive. Um, then at the same time, you have when uh, there was the implementation with Trezor using uh, Shmir secret sharing, uh, you had some companies like Casa coming out saying, no, we're actually going to stick with uh, multi sig instead because it's more reliable. Um, SSS is a bit too complex still uh, in our model. So do you like, do you have a perspective on that? Like, do you, would you ever implement something like that in these projects? Um, I don't know. I mean, the, the goal of Magical is in a way kind of to support everything, which is, I mean, everything, everything is, is probably impossible, but it is to every uh, like so modular that if you uh, want to use like a normal with the C, you can do so. If you want to use a, a more complex scheme, uh, you can do so too. So the idea is that uh, right now, the, the way it's implemented, uh, basically the magical library only takes a descriptor uh, that may or may not contain uh, expriv, so like private keys. And the way uh, you, you get to these private keys, it's like up to the, the basically the user of the library. Uh, so I, I'm kind of planning to have this uh, as a kind of separate module where you have, um, I would say like popular templates that are uh, used commonly. Like you could have a template for a BIP39 mnemonic where you uh, input a BIP39 mnemonic uh, and you get back the single SIG expriv uh, to use in Magical, or you could have a multi-SIG with BIP39 uh, mnemonics uh, combined with xpubs so you, you could have you could input like your mnemonic plus the xpub of the other participant uh, you could also have the shamir secret sharing template uh, maybe for a single sig so like you input the single parts and they're combined together but this is like a another layer on top of magical so I, i'm trying to keep everything uh basically separated as much as possible so magical only acts on an expriv and the way you get to that or, or potentially multiple if you have multiple uh, keys in your descriptor and the way you get to this expriv is up to the user. So I could provide some uh, commonly used uh, like patterns and templates, but people could also um, implement their own. And, and this is actually not, not only true for the, uh, let's say like pub, a private key uh, derivation scheme, but also potentially for uh, which database you want to use. Basically the currently there are uh, basically two different databases that you can choose, one that saves stuff to disk and one that only keeps stuff in memory. So when you close the wallet, everything is um, is wiped. Uh, but if you want to integrate it with like a more serious for, for like a uh, enterprise grade uh, uh, implementation, you could integrate it with, uh, I don't know, a SQL based database and you can just like implement the adapter between, uh, that, that basically Magical can call to store and, and read information uh, so you could have you could use literally the same core code uh, in a mobile wallet with SQLite, uh, and, and then in an enterprise data center with a, a replicated uh, storage, and, and it's very modular. So you can just like swap out a module, uh, maybe use one of the use one of the uh, default implementation that I provide, or also implement your own. But you don't have to rewrite the entire wallet. You can just rewrite the single uh, model, and this is basically the core uh, idea of Magical. Yeah, I will say, I will add that this kind of uh, tendency is uh, growing in the entire Bitcoin ecosystem. I think that, like uh, what uh, what uh, Alecos is doing with Magical is is implemented this way. Magical is, is, is a set of libraries more than a wallet. Then eventually uh, Alecos may roll out some kind of uh, example wallet, but it's, most, it's mostly a library set. And the same goes with the work we are doing on RGB and around RGB, for example, uh, the, the, the model I, I described to you about uh, Peter Todd's idea of single use seal uh, is not like one single product. Is there is a there are some libraries that are intended to do uh, time stamping on Bitcoin transactions. Some are intended to do single use seal. Some are intended to use the single use seal in order to implement an asset transfer capability. So the the idea right now is very rudimental. But the idea is that there is a growing ecosystem of uh, of uh, of uh, module modular uh, reusable. 
tools that are different from uh, monolithic products. Like the same goes with uh, like a Rust Bitcoin library, and there is like uh, uh, the Lightning, the Rust Light Lightning project uh, uh, initiated by Matt Corallo is not a, a, is not yet another Lightning wallet. It's a it's a library uh, or a set of libraries that can be used by everybody putting together pieces in order to do uh, something complete. So right now these efforts are still very early and still kind of uh, scattered around different repositories because I mean my dream was to have to promote a single repository where you can just pick whatever you can just pick the pieces and they all come together nicely but that's unrealistic to do uh, to, to have as a final result in the short term because uh, every single developer must be in must have control over some level of some level of discretion especially in the first phase so it's better to have a more decentralized approach but eventually i'm optimistic that uh, I mean, uh, most of the development in the area right now is not coming out with a product uh, which is already uh, like uh, uh, like uh, uh, turnkey, uh, ready for being uh, used by the final user. It's coming out as uh, libraries, and it's it's interesting that everybody is is slowly converging over Rust libraries because Rust has this particular. Uh, co um, like uh, trade-off balance between uh, uh, low-level uh, access to memory management and stuff like that can that can be useful for performance uh, and for se uh, se memory security, which is fundamental for Bitcoin stuff. But also, it's high-level enough to uh, allow you to uh, express complex stuff. So there is a, a, a convergence over. The, the 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 programming language and the library style. So uh, in a, in a very organic way, everything is kind of going in this direction. Of course, this this doesn't mean that you can go on this repository and and take down uh, uh, five hundred stuff and build uh, uh, this world with uh, some RGB and some uh, magical uh, complex uh, uh, mini script stuff and some uh, lighting stuff from the Rust lighting project is still uh, they are still largely incompatible but they, I think that the goal can be I think that we could see in a few years an ecosystem in which uh, you don't have to choose between uh, monolithic products, but you can actually pick from a set of modular libraries and and build to and build stuff that are actually pretty much standard and and easy to uh, independently review and independently assess. That would be a, a great situation to be at. I think that uh, Crypto Square is is mostly funding stuff in that direction, but the same goes for the people supporting us in our uh, magical and uh, RGB efforts like uh, Bitfinex and other players, they are mostly all on board with this approach. Yeah, so, uh, definitely agree. Go ahead. So would you be soliciting some of these uh, financial institutions then? Um, because uh, as you say, there's no kind of GUI. You might, you might do an example wallet, but mostly you're just providing them with the raw materials with which they can build their own sort of bespoke internal walleting system, say at a bank or, uh, you know, like an insurer, as I used in the example earlier. And every bank's going to be different. It's going to have its own internal policies that are going to be unique to, to, to its circumstances. So are you able to provide consultancy services? Is that an area that you would see a lot of business? Business activity, or do you do you mostly just treating this project as like a grassroots kind of open source project? Uh, well, I, I, no, sorry, yeah, go go. go. Okay, <laughs> so uh, of your side, business side. Well, uh, it, it's still. I mean, we are still not certain because uh, that's the way I set up the things initially. So RGB was started because uh, we were consulting, and so the idea was that I was uh, I was taking money from consultancy clients. And, and, and funneling this money to open source uh, uh, developers to so the condition where you are funding research that will be open, usable by everybody, not just by you. You may have some special access, a special say because you are funding, but uh, when it's out, it's out and everybody can use it. So that's the initial model that worked to bootstrap some of the things we are doing. Uh, right now, we, uh, we are moving to, a, a, I mean, uh, right now, for example, the, the work that Alecos is doing on 
either uh, Magic and, and RGP and the work that other developers uh, are doing on RGP is not, or the work that Peter Todd is doing on Proof Marshall, which is the way to take my, uh, to take the single use seal uh, idea that I described and to uh, improve it in a way that you can aggregate many, many off-chain, uh, let's call it state transactions in a single uh, on-chain uh, transaction. And um, so Proof Marshall is paid by the same set of uh, donors, sponsors, which is right now mostly Bitfinex. And uh, all these projects are uh, right now mm, are using a more direct donation model. We don't exclude to do consultancy. So uh, Alcos has been contacted independently as he will, he will tell you. Oh, hi Shinobi. Keep, keep going. Ignore the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, Alicus has been contacted directly for some uh, consultancy job. For example, he reviewed this, uh, this uh, Revolt project and other stuff. And... Uh... <laughs> okay. Ignore and, the monkey uh... behind the curtain. <laughs> And I also have been contacted by some clients to do uh, to do stuff. I think that I think that this will be prevalent uh, in a phase two. So after the the software is out there, there will be probably a more reliable space for uh, the Red Hat model, so 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 to speak. So uh, if you want to integrate or customize or uh, or study or change the uh, the protocol. Uh, who better to help you than the same people that develop the protocol? So it's natural that if you if you are integrating Magical or 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 uh, Proof Marshall or RGB or Open the Stamps or whatever, then you will probably uh, be be uh, very uh, happy to pay the people that uh, develop the same protocol in order to help you because that's the, that's the best people around for that kind of 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 uh, knowledge for sure. So the consultancy model, I think. Can came can come on top. In this moment, we uh, we are open to that. But we are open to that. But we think that the most uh, honest, direct way, uh, because the consultancy relationship can create some kind of expectation, some kind of weird incentives. So right now, what we are saying to our sponsors is, uh, guys, you are just donating and you are just sponsoring. And uh, of course, they they have a say. They can. Uh, if they say, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not paying for magical development anymore, I'm only paying for, uh, for RGB or for whatever. If they say, Peter, don't, don't do Proof Marshall stuff anymore, I'm not paying. Of course, we, we comply. So it's not that they are giving money to me and I'm giving money to everybody the way I see fit. Uh, <laughs> we, are, we are still funding money in a very, uh, uh, in a per project, on a per project base. And, uh, and so the donor has a saying, but it's not yet the consultancy model. The consultancy model may happen on top, for sure. Yeah, one the quick thing that I'm gonna say is that uh, I, I believe this project should, uh, I mean, it must always uh, remain like an open source, uh, non-profit uh, effort. So the, the libraries themselves, uh, I don't think we're gonna, we're ever gonna like sell them or anything, uh, but maybe like to support that. Uh, if there's a chance of like somebody um, like buying a consultancy and then having the ability to use this money to uh, support open source developer, I, I think we should do that. But uh, I, I don't know. I'm not like a business guy, so yeah, I don't know if there's like market for that or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I, I would say the goal would be to uh, potentially take money in, uh, not really to make a profit, but to uh, finance the, the development of, of even more open source tools and, and stuff. Yeah, that's that's really great. Uh, you want to tell us if you have like a call to action to end on, like if there's any kind of call out you want to you want to invite more devs to look at the repo, or you you need anything or sponsorship. Well, as for call to action, I, I I think that people should start to take a look at the repository. So yeah, it will be cool for uh, to have more developers involved. There is always a trade-off because uh, 
uh, at the beginning of a project, uh, same goes for Bitcoin and Satoshi actually, at the very beginning of a project, uh, it's more efficient if the creator of the project has a more uh, direct saying, as a more uh, like a blank page to work independently, because if you have to negotiate with everybody any, uh, as, a, as a standard, every single choice, you will never get to a production, production stage. So uh, both projects may be in a phase in which, uh, uh, in which uh, even other projects that I mentioned, like uh, like uh, Proof Marshall by Peter Todd. I don't I don't even know if you can access the public uh, repository about that. Probably everything is still private in Peter's repository. The reason for that is that at the beginning you you just want the the, the author to be uh, to to have control over the direction in a in a more consistent way, uh, following a more uh, a, a less entropic design. But then you have to start. Uh, uh, interacting with people, converging over stand common standards, and you have to uh, uh, to get feedbacks and stuff. So uh, I will I will let to uh, I, as far as RGB is concerned, I think that uh, you can already see a lot of people discussing stuff, and you can already enter the uh, LMP BP organization on GitHub and see the work which is going up and suggesting stuff, uh, trying out stuff. I will not use that in production yet because as, an ex as I explained, there is all the wallet part, which is still critical. But uh, if you want to look at the general design, uh, there, is, there is room for a lot of uh, interaction, I think. And uh, as far as Magical is concerned, I will leave to, uh, to Alakos the, the call to action. Uh, yeah, so as far as Magical is concerned, there is a, uh, first of all, there's the like official website, which is magicalbitcoin.org with a lot of, not really a lot, but uh, with some documentation that can like help people get started. Um, yeah, as, as Giacomo said, I think this, this project um, is still in a phase where um, I, I would like to hear feedback. I, I'm already uh, luckily hearing some of it. Uh, but still, it's not that any uh, every little small change uh, goes through like a full peer review um, like flow uh, because it will make it like impossible to to finish the project. So uh, what I would say is that if uh, somebody is interested in actually like working on it and developing it, uh, you can like text me on on Twitter uh, or I, I don't know like use my email. It's it's public on on GitHub. Um, and contact me, and then I can like help you get started, and and um, help you like actually contribute. Uh, but I would say it's still not in a phase where uh, where there are like big discussion. Is um, I would say in a way like not really impulsive in a way, but it's like I have this idea, I implement it, and if it doesn't work, I'm gonna iterate over it. Uh, there are a few parts that are uh, the more like core parts that are starting to become more like stable, and I'm not touching them anymore. Uh, but for everything that is like new and, and coming like um, bleeding edge, this all of these parts they, they change uh, quite fast. Um, I don't know regarding sponsorship. If somebody is interested in uh, sponsoring that, that's also absolutely welcome. So I don't know. Again, you can contact me or Giacomo, and, and we can um, discuss about it. So right now it's uh, basically just me um, working on it. On a like regular basis, uh, and it's not even a full time basis because I'm, I'm um, working a little bit on that and a little bit on on RGB. Uh, so with more money, we could like uh, hire a second developer or, or maybe uh, give me a chance to work full time on that. So that would obviously really help the uh, project like uh, get to a, a production ready stage. So that's also uh, super welcome. Um, so how, how so, yeah. do we how do we find you on social media? What's your handle on Twitter? Uh, yeah, my handle is at uh, a Filini. Uh, it sounds very weird in English. It's different in Italian. Um, it's Alecos Filini. You can also find me uh, with my name, which is like a, uh, I don't have like a pseudonym on on, on social media. Um, otherwise, also my website is a and there's my email there and my GitHub also. It's basically that <laughs> username everywhere. We'll, That's great. We'll link it we in the put, description. Yeah, we'll put it in the description for everybody. Yeah, thanks. That, that's great. Yeah. Same for me, Giacomo Zucco, G I A C O M O Z U C C O. So Zucco is Z U C C O and not uh, Z O O K O. That's another guy we're doing different stuff. Very different guy. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I I absolutely joined the the uh, the uh, 
shout out uh, for a current uh, sponsor and I, I also confirm what Aleko said if, if anybody is interested to fund uh, these projects that are already running uh, they are more than welcome uh, the, the, the current sponsors are very generous they are covering a lot of stuff without any kind of direct uh, business uh, return uh, all the indirect business returns but uh, we can for sure use uh, resources and uh, same goes for people that want to maybe kind to try to use a similar model for other projects that are in line with the philosophy that uh, that we described to you so if your idea is to uh, create a new rust library uh, that can fit uh, together with other r uh, nice rust libraries in a in a general way that uses bitcoin in a in an interesting way uh, i think that maybe we can try to uh, i mean if you can provide funding directly let's do that let's disintermediate and let's uh, provide uh, let's uh, get your money directly but if you can't maybe you can try to suggest uh, us uh, another side projects uh, we, we tried not to have so th this kind of uh, operation i started it when i tried to push for a, a common development of the bolt uh, protocol for latin network back in uh, 2016 and uh, and then i I continued it with uh, open time stamps uh, standard for time stamping when I uh, basically funneled some money to the uh, f to different developers that were uh, working independently on uh, time stamping standards and they joined together a single standard and uh, and that went well uh, now uh, basically what we're doing is basically as, as I said is uh, magical and RGB and um, open and uh, Proof Marshall by Peter, but if there is something else that can enter this kind of generic uh, architecture, maybe we can find a way to bridge some some money to you. But uh, uh, I mean, don't, don't ask me to sponsor uh, your podcast or something like that. I'm, I'm not talking to you guys, but I'm talking to the general public. Uh, we are we are we, we we don't have infinite resources. We are trying to funnel resources to a very specific set of uh, tools and libraries. That's great. So Shinobi, was there anything that uh, you wanted to cover that you haven't heard us talk about so far? Yeah, I just want to say that I am deeply offended that you guys would go ahead and record a special edition without me because I overslept and just didn't show up at the scheduled time with no response. How dare you? You need a red phone. <laughs> We need to have a red phone that you have by your, you know, tabletop, by your bed, and we can just call you and wake you up. I need a way to send you a rooster call. I don't disagree, but, um, yeah, I mean, you know, you know I'm, I'm happy with uh, however you guys took it. I don't want to tack on, like, a weird flow at the end where I just repeat things, you know what I mean? Yeah, I th sure. I think you guys got to the heart of the issue well. I have faith in you. Great. Well, Shinobi, you can you can just uh, dub your voice on top of uh, of the question, so it looks like you ask them. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on! This is it. Come he on. never overslept. Come on, this is my first time. <laughs> Let me keep it. <laughs> Joking. Well, is is, uh, is everybody done? No more uh, questions. Yeah, I, th or I think points? that was good. It was a, it was a nice natural, and also it's a one hour long uh, recording, so that's quite nice in terms of timing. Yeah. You don't want it to go um, on too long. Okay, well, so the outro is, uh, hope everybody enjoyed the conversation and also uh, Monkey's uh, crashing of the party. And we will see you next time. Have a good day, punks. Bye. Bye. Yeah, you can have a voice, you're